Hey everyone, good morning. It's Jessica Alstrom here, and usually I would wait for Second Sunday to do uh, a broadcast or a update on the energy, but I thought, you know, I'm inspired. I've been talking to so many people this week all over the world, and it seems to be a very similar um, a similar uh, implosion happening. And I thought, you know what, I have uh, time between clients and it would be a great opportunity for me to kind of share a little bit about what is going on if you are like freaking out right now, okay? Mm. Okay, so first off, as I've been saying in my, um, I don't know, second Sunday for the last eight, nine years is that we are building up to something. And we have been on this path of uncovering and becoming our truest selves, not by learning, not by studying, but by remembering, by reminding, by really uncovering, and a lot of unlearning. That has been really the journey. And when we kind of wake up to bigger questions about ourselves and what we're doing here and why we're here and what is the point of all of this and why is this so hard and why does this hurt? It really takes you down a rabbit hole. And for me, it absolutely took me down that rabbit hole uh, probably in 2008. And um, I was living in California, the real estate market crashed. Of course, that was the business I was in, divine timing. Ended up moving to the Midwest to raise my kids and, you know, open a small business as a single mom and didn't really think much of it other than, you know, kind of looking at it through the eyes of ego, failure, starting over, single mom, right? But this this was the, the actual biggest pivotal moment in my journey of, of really looking within. And I think that just like what COVID has brought a lot of us is an opportunity to slow down, an opportunity to, to look inside and really reflect about what it is that we're doing and why it is that we're doing things and, and bringing us back to ourselves. If you'll notice everything we've manifested probably since 2012, even though we have this like, this almost innate desire to create amazing lives, you know, find the soulmate, have the business, be successful, help people, heal the world, you know, obtain financial freedom. We, we have this like innate drive to do those things. And, and I don't know if we have that innate drive because we're, you know, in the power of influence around everyone else thinking that is what we're doing here. Or if that is something that we really do ultimately desire it's, it's still kind of a, a conundrum as far as what motivates us. But bottom line, this journey that we have been on, you know, I, I would say most of us have really started this probably 20 years ago and, and didn't really even know they were working on this until probably eight years ago. And what we're working on is we're working on creating more awareness within. And it doesn't sound sexy or like a purpose that we would want to go to college for, but you have been in college and you have been studying very hard uh, the University of You. And, you know, all along we're, we're striving for success and worth and value and your PhD was sitting right here, right? And I think that when we strive to become successful from a state of unworthiness from a state of feeling like we want to be more because we're not enough already. It's going to take you 10 steps back because ultimately what you're here is to remember yourself, put yourself back together. And when did you get separated? Probably childhood, right? Most of us that first seven years taught us away from our alignment, away from our chakra connections of that flow of the universe. It taught us away from you know, what are, what we actually want. So we had to kind of, kind of shift this direction of the, the three brains that in coherence can manifest anything you desire. And maybe that's a quick reminder for me to share that, you know, when your brain, your heart and your tummy, your gut all want the same things. And for the reason of expansion, 
you'll notice that everything flows. But think about it, even something basic like a child not being hungry, but being forced to eat everything on their plate is separated from their gut intuition. Their body is telling them that they don't wanna eat, but they are shamed into eating what's on their plate because it was provided for, or you know, if food doesn't, you know, uh, if food is in an abundance to us. And because we weren't hungry, we had to then, we had to then think about food or even survival issues differently up here. And so what we were desiring in our heart, where we wanted to go, where we wanted to be, was stopped or interfered with, then we had to separate from that. So that's really where kind of the breakdown in internal con communication happens. You know, self-love is so silly that the idea of self-love is hard. It's not really about self-love. It's about reconnection. You do love yourself, but there are parts of you that are going that way and parts of you desiring that and parts of you stuck in the past and parts of you anticipating the future and parts of you that are terrified to be present because in the present moment, that's where the pain actually is sometimes, most of the time. And so we would rather be anywhere but here. And because of that, that creates a huge amount of anxiety. And all of this is just a symptom of separation. So, you know, as I've been teaching or, or reminding you guys in every second Sunday is kind of month by month, play by play of how this is all folding collectively, folding, unfolding energetically, unfolding spiritually. And so it brings us to kind of this rendezvous point, you know, we're approaching this kind of monumental day that we have every year in the United States, 4th of July, that is the symbol of freedom. Well, it's interesting that, you know, in the same time, we are losing some major human rights here in the United States of freedom of choice, which is a very interesting concept when we look at where we are collectively where we are rising spiritually and what is manifesting physically, okay? So when we take stock or look at everything that's happening as the point of an observer, right? The Neo, the non-emotional observer, we can see that as we go 10 steps forward, then we are kind of herded. You are, we are being herded in the direction of you are not free. See, we just passed the law that says you are not free. And as the collective wakes up from this pain, this struggle, struggle creates genius, struggle creates ideas, struggle creates innovation, you know, struggle creates a thinker to think and then create. So I don't see anything as inherently bad here because it's an opportunity to even wake up further, not about what is happening but about what we are feeling, what we are thinking, what we are being, what we are allowing ourselves to be, what we believe we are allowed to do or be or have. So it's a great moment in history where on one half, we're about to sell, celebrate this idea of freedom in the United States, which, which is a collection of people who settled and migrated for freedom. And although we are not letting anyone into our country, we are saying we are here free, but we are also taking away a major human rights. Um, and, and this is the, the um, outlawing of abortion. And so I don't wanna make this political, but it is a highlight or a marker or a reflection point for us to all, wherever you are on the planet to take stock right now about where you are in alignment with your freedom, okay? This may not affect you physically, but it might affect you morally. And that hopefully will take you down the rabbit hole of your own awareness and get deeper, deeper into yourself. Why this is so important right now is because as I've been teaching in, in my academy that I have online, the quantum method, and that I'm now demonstrating in my quantum fitness centers that are opening around the world, is that you are in a very significant time in history if you are here now. And as the evolutionary process unfolds on the earth plane, this is also happening on a higher plane of our own personal spiritual evolution where we are becoming more aware. 
call it woke, call it whatever you want, you are waking up to more and more and more truth, usually through a painful experience, a heartbreak, a loss, some major grief. And a lot of us are taking that pain and we are turning it into, you know, purpose and art and guidance. And that is fantastic. And we are getting there, even if it looks bleak, even if it looks scary, we are making progress. But where we are right now, 2022, is literally the manifestation of the catch 22. We are calling this, and I say we, I mean the collection of guidance that I have access to. So we are calling this the rude awakening. And the reason why we are calling this the rude awakening is because as you have been awakening more and more to yourself, you probably stumbled upon your super consciousness and we, wow, I am more than this body. And then you stumbled into the conscious awareness that maybe what I am being isn't all that I am. That took you into the subconscious where you could reflect back into your, your primary belief systems and your rooted issues and your separation ideas. And from that, it has taken us to this moment in 2022 that we're about to move into this July energy that is the rude awakening of the unconscious. We as a species have to make the unconscious conscious to be fully evolved. For that DNA you wanna activate, it doesn't come from your light worker. From that Kundalini experience you so desperately want to have, it isn't going to come from a practitioner. It is going to come when you are coherent with the me, myself, and I within. When that alignment becomes one, it's not about creating unity out there. That is the symptom and the reflection of what is going on in here. So we will not see change out here until we are in alignment with all parts of ourselves. And to, to keep it very simple in fourth grade quantum physics here, the me, myself, and I, the mind, body, soul, the, the three innate parts of a whole, the triangle forming the solid structure. And that has to be everybody on the same page. You know, think about just a day where you want to eat healthy, but your body doesn't, right? You want to save money so that you can go on that trip, but your cravings and urges say, but we need joy now. We want to fall in love, but we settle for painful relationships or we obsess about a relationship that should have worked. We obsess about the money we spent. We obsess about all of these things. And so right there, it demonstrates that this, this, and this is not on the same page. And it may not be an enemy, but if it is not on the same page and you're on a journey, yet every part of you is wanting something different, this might feel frustrating. This might feel like a block. This might feel like you're waiting or you're waiting. Okay, this might feel like you're not being seen and heard by other people. This might feel like you are being outcasted or attacked for your own authentic beliefs. And really, all that's happening, any symptom that your body is creating or your reality is creating is the symptom of disconnection. We have settled for addictions to numb our disconnection. And the addictions give us the high, the instant high, the feeling of connection so that we don't have to feel disconnected all the time. But you know that that addiction can, be, can become obsessive and it becomes a chase for more feeling like that, more connection like that, more um, awareness that that moment gave you. But ultimately, every hit of that plant medicine or that drug or that person or that place or that book you're reading is doing nothing more than bringing you back into yourself. And until we make peace with all three aspects of ourselves walking the same direction, it is going to feel like you were going 10 steps forward and 10 steps back. And this year, it's 
really going to demonstrate that? So what lies in the unconscious? Why did we wait until 2022 to start making the unconscious parts of you conscious? Why didn't we go there first? The reason why is we couldn't handle it. We would not be able to survive it. We would not be able to, to comprehend truly the amount of suffering and deep rooted loss, grief and pain that is sitting in your unconsciousness if we had not experienced super consciousness, if we had not gotten to know our conscious belief systems, if we had not studied our childhoods, okay? We would not have the connection with ourselves. We would not have the tools. We would not have the feeling of safety or the understanding. And we definitely would not be able to let go of judgment about what's in there. And this is going for every single person that can understand that they are on a journey. Now, those of you who don't understand you're on a journey, you're not probably listening to this, okay? Because you are. And when you start your journey, this will all click, whether it's now or 150 years from now. It will click because everyone is allowed to do this in their own time. But the community that I seem to attract are those who are avidly asking questions, avidly working toward their journey, avidly working on connecting with themselves and like-minded individuals, people, places, and things that resonate with who they are. So if you can hear this, then you are quickly approaching the gates of your most unconscious parts. And when we do not actively open the gates ourselves and say, okay, it's time for us to team, of unconscious or subconscious, conscious and superconscious, we're going in. When we do not actively open the gates and pursue this part of ourselves, it manifests as very, very blindsided manifestations, illness, death, loss, okay? Um, fear, losing power, losing freedom, right? Losing money, security, people. Because what is happening outside of you is a reflection of what is vibrating inside of you. And for a very long time, the unconscious part of you was held dormant by the density of the planet itself. The very gravity that sat on this planet kept your demons below ground. And when I say demons, it's a reference of demonic or dark or lacking of love, right? Every single human has that. And every single person is going to wake up to it, even if it's a rude awakening. So in this moment, what are you manifesting that seems very scary after all the work you've done? Who are you losing right now? What have you lost? And are you processing this grief by internally realizing that you've manifested it or are you actively working in your story to fix or survive it? So for basically the last eight years, I have been developing quantum fitness and I didn't really know why. I think a lot of us intuitives out there, we're just, we don't think, we just flow, we just create. We don't know what purpose it is that we're writing this for or channeling this for or saying this for half the time until we get on the other side of it. And it really has been this year where everything that I have kind of been unpacking within myself and helped other people around the world unpack finally made sense. Because when we get to this unconscious part that has resided in the density, the sediment, the rock, the underground, the middle earth of you, it's now moving to the surface because you're getting higher and higher you're getting happier and happier. You're getting more aware. You're becoming more successful in your own definition. You're becoming more loving. You're becoming more friendly with yourself. And what that does is it uproots the parts of you that were holding the heaviest part underground. And as above is below. So when we open up the superconscious by exploring our spiritual realms, we are also taking the padlock off of the unconscious gates. Now, 
it goes to the hunter monkey effect here and says, well, if enough people are doing it, eventually everyone will do it. And this is how we slowly wake everyone up by someone exploring their higher consciousness begins to maybe by no means of their own decision or at least conscious awareness begins to open up the baggage of this unconscious space. So this is a process that will be rude or you can be proactive. Quantum fitness is the science of going into the trauma before the trauma manifests to be proactive at the logical next step. We know as above is below. We know that every person on the planet will have to integrate their most unconscious part before they move into a sovereign being, a creator. Until you are the creator of your own reality, that is thought, word, deed, manifestation. No time and space required. No necessarily um, influence from others. It is when you are completely coherent with the mind, body, soul, which means that you are all on the same page and you're not traveling across country in a minivan with two opposing needs and wants yelling at you, demanding to stop every five minutes and you know shop away their gas money to get to where we're going. That's what it feels like when you're moving forward in a body that has different cravings and urges than your goals and dreams. Your bank account that has a different dollar amount than your hopes and dreams people in your life who want to go a different direction. This is a byproduct of the unconscious still being unconscious to you. But it is popping up day after day. And in this July, July energy, as we move to the threshold of the middle point of this particular year, it's going to get louder, bigger, and crazier. Unless you want to get proactive. So I have created Quantum Fitness, which is basically a way for you to feel safe and explore your own parts of yourself, all of them, in a structured, routine, consistent way. Because consistency is what your inner child needs to feel safe, and we have no consistency out there right now. We have no certainty. We have no confirmation that any of this is going to work out unless we get into here. We don't have job stability anymore because of the way things are changing and we are losing human rights. So in that essence, the only way out is through. So what I've done after I got very sick and tired of manifesting the worst case scenario after doing 12 years of spiritual work, I started to scratch my head and say, I don't like post-manifestational awareness. I don't want to become aware after it manifests. It's taking too much time. It's sucking the vitality out of my body. It's causing me endless stress, anxiety, stress, worry, humiliation, you name it. And the grief is, feels too heavy for me to be able to carry it in a new idea or into a new relationship. But I don't know what to do with it. And I don't even know if it's mine because the unconscious is also your bloodline, your ancestors, your other incarnations, past, present, and future that are manifesting in some sort of time of now. And it is a vibration that is active in your choice, okay? The true definition of freedom is time, space, and choice. So until we have become the creators of the malleable thing called time. And until we have created this space in our own body for that higher self to be sitting in the driver's seat, you truly will not have the choices that you could have if you worked more in here than you worked out there. So I got very tired of post-manifestational awareness. I would get the message, I would get the lesson, but after the fact after the money was gone, after the heart was broken, after the separation of loved ones, after businesses had crashed, post-manifestation at 46 years old, 45 years old was getting old. And I could see that my stress was creating a rapid aging in my body because stress ages you, okay? When you're not stressed and you're chill, you are not aging or aging very, very slowly depending on what brainwave you are. 
Gamma, I know, I am, you're not aging. Theta, I'm deciding, choosing, playing, creating. I'm aging very slowly because I am the creator of time and space. Either creator or don't care when you're getting lost in that. Those are the brain waves where your body says, hold, pause, let's let her decide, choose, discern, and then we'll move into that state of being and we'll move this very slowly, even though everything feels like it's going through fast. So this idea of that was more genius that came from struggle was if there was a way to anticipate this manifestation, if there, there was a way to provoke it, evoke it, summons it, call it forth in a safe environment where I didn't have to fight with someone to find my, my pain or my anger. I didn't have to lose a loved one to resurrect my grief. Was there a way that I could create a way for myself, of course, to go through this unconscious gates with all of me, with my super conscious, with my conscious, with my subconscious, basically with the higher self and the inner child going into these darker places together. So with that idea, I started creating an idea of how I could do this. And I basically went into my workshop and I started putting ideas and theories together on how I could truly evoke this trauma out of my physical body because unconscious resides in your DNA, in your genetics, in your cellular memory, in your muscle memory, in your neural pathways of your brain and every other sediment that it has compacted in. So basically trauma unresolved over more than a seven year period of time falls deeper, deeper, deeper into the zip drive of your bone marrow and then ultimately your genetic blueprint. So of course, now we are summonsing up by being conscious awareness, the parts of us that are unconscious. The roots are coming up with every single one of us. And I have been talking to people all over the planet who have been reaching out to me like crazy these last few weeks that are saying, what is going on? I just lost my child. I just lost my partner. My partner just got cancer. You know, I just lost everything or I'm going through this extreme experience in my body that I thought I had resolved. And this is just in the last two weeks, this huge outpouring that I've been getting. Basically, what is going on? Well, what is going on is what I'm sharing. And it's just like the winter is going to come and then the spring is going to come. This is the season that we are in collectively. If you are pursuing your what am I, who am I, I am journey. If you are here, you are here. And there is a way for us to be completely proactive for this, but it is going to require all of you. Alchemy means all of me. This doesn't mean that you're going to go in meditation and figure out how to create this alignment through a higher perspective. We actually have to take ourselves into the same vibration as the trauma itself and evoke it out of our bodies because your brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and real, what's real, or at least what you see is real. So if your body is experiencing a vibration, it will create a tuning fork vibration and resurrect or rise up everything that is the same vibration. So I've created a system that is foolproof, that literally pro is proactive in this approach but we are not resurrecting our unrooted, you know, galactic kind of rooted, you know, genetic ancestral bloodline trauma and then sending you out in the world like, good, how do you feel? We're resurrecting it or we're, we're evoking it and then we're neutralizing it. Positive and negative create neutrality. So now it is part of you that's integrated in another part of you but it now is no longer bad or good, which is always a resonance of a measurement of density or light. And you are now able to feel that deep seated feeling 
without experiencing the story that matches the vibration. Because we know if you manifest something like a great loss, you're not going to be like, there's that unconscious grief and then go to your workshop and integrate that. Absolutely not. You're going to tend to your physical reality. You are going to fall apart. You're probably going to help other people not fall apart. You're going to assist with whatever damage was created outside of you around the circumstance that could take up half of your life if you gave it enough attention. You will have to have funerals and you will have to, you know, find new jobs and new partners because that disconnection feels like ripping away from who I am. And so instead of going, this is what she was talking about, we tend to get lost in our physical reality for three, six months to a year and then scratch our heads and like, okay, now I see the lesson. I was supposed to unpack this grief. I just didn't want to do it this way. You don't really have control over how you're going to manifest the deepest parts of grief. Because what unconsciousness is, is the absence of light. It is not evil. It is the absence of light, which means it has forgotten or has moved away from the idea that it is love. So what resides in the unconscious, the frequency of the unconsciousness is grief and loss. It's disempowerment. It's hopelessness. It's I'm alone. It's I'm separate. It's I'm unworthy. It's I'm angry. I'm rage. That is what is in there. And the more you bottle it up with the security blanket addictions of the instant gratification of the hit, the more you pressurize this. So you could be like, the last 10 years have been golden. How did I manifest this? Because for the last 10 years, this has been coming up slowly and you've been putting it to sleep with a surrogate dopamine hit or something outside of you that you could work towards. So as it started to come up, you were out running it. It's been there the whole time and the time is now. So as it starts to evoke by physical reality being a vibrational match to grief, because the third dimension as we know it is technically imploding into itself. And that is the frequency of loss, which is uprooting your frequency of loss, regardless of where you are. Even if you are a current guru right now that has a million followers, if you have not evoked and unpacked this unconscious part, you too will experience whatever storyline best fits your separation, where your buttons. Notice how when we get triggered by loved ones, they always know what buttons to push. They always know what's going to hurt us the most. They always know where that fine line is. And when we have, give someone the power to know those things about us, we give people the power to destroy us. Well, your unconscious is you. And so you're unfolding, unpacking, your unleashing is going to feel a lot like that. I'm not trying to scare you. This is just real talk. I mean, this is like no more spiritual bypassing here. It is what it is. We, what, and this, and ultimately, if you could see that this is the end, this isn't the beginning. All that work you've done has not been for no reason. It was specifically done for you, with you, through you, by you, so that you could become strong enough and brave enough and courageous enough and aware enough and knowledgeable enough and self-loving enough to be able to go into the places that are unpacking right now around this simulation, okay? It's, you're there, which means that if you want to kind of gas up or get in there and unpack it before it unpacks you, then that would be one of the smartest things that you could do. For me, it's, it's very important that this process be in a safe environment held by practitioners that have experienced this holistically themselves and that the unpacking of this traumatic energy that is underneath the surface be completely supported by the higher realms. 
And when I say higher realms, higher, more aware versions of you that are reflected in the people that are spit, the holding space. So basically we are midwifing and acting as a doula of our own consciousness in this process. And that is assisting people to really let go because they know that if they truly can let go of what is inside of them, quickly they will be on the other side and then the body will no longer hold this imprint of grief that is weighing you down, keeping your DNA turned off, keeping your kundalini out of alignment, keeping your spiritual gifts away from you, keeping love away from you, keeping money away from you, keeping freedom away from you because you are freedom, you are abundance. So anytime we're experiencing the opposite of that, we are disconnected or we are pushing down the part of us that is actually the part of us that we need to integrate to be a holistic being again, because this is stuff won't kill you. It won't kill you out there this time, but it will definitely make you feel like you are going to die. And when we go through this process here, it is going to be so much easier because all we have to do is experience the feeling, not the story. The story is what distracts us. The story is what takes us away from ourselves and rejection and abandonment to go tend to the mess that just manifested outside of you. So it keeps you outside instead of inside. Post-manifestational awareness is the longest energy to integrate because it is so distracting. When we can evoke it in a safe space and go all the way through making unconscious, subconscious, taking it through the subconscious into the consciousness, all the way up into the super consciousness. And that is a holistic journey that that dense part of you will make in a two, three hour session. And it's transformed my reality as I'm sitting here you know in my new office I'm hearing these emails of people that are having all this post manifestation awareness but they don't have the awareness yet they're still questioning why why me and why after everything I've done why after everything I've given everyone I've helped how is this happening to me and they don't see that it's the logical next step of their own personal evolution and again, I would be asking the same exact question if I had not been taking myself through this process the last year and a half. Now I'm on the other side of it, experiencing a blissful reality where things are win-win and love is unconditional and abundance is flowing and freedom and ideas and people are showing up and I'm going, I can't relate to the story, but I have been there my whole life. So now I am that safe environment and I'm taking my my team, not through a training, but through the experience to become the correct practitioner to be able to hold space. So when I say unconscious, I mean the dense grief, lost, empty, alone, disconnected part of you. When we rise that up to the subconscious, the subconscious is where the body is online. It is what the body believes it is. It is the genetic imprint, not of the past, but by present moment in the future potentials. And as we move that subconscious into the conscious, that is really where the identification of your creativity and your inner child is and the artist and the genius and the creative being that you are resides. And we move that dense energy all the way up through, all the way into the super conscious room where that gamma energy is the super consciousness of the I am, and we take you through a complete circuit. Now, although there it sounds like there's just a few stations here, there's actually seven steps to this process. Seven steps because we've got to open up and evoke and summons the energy. And then once the energy is now active, the trauma is active and you're remembering things and you're reminding and you're becoming aware it's such an easier space because if you've ever watched someone argue, it's easy to figure out what their solution is because you're not entangled in the story of what's happening. It's not your partner. It's not your money, right? So now when we evoke this, this trauma from the unconscious in your body, but it's not attached to a story, you're not attached to it. You're not thinking and feeling about, well, it own, it's yours. It's just there. 
And so now, just like you could see someone else, this process of feeling something before it manifests now gives you the safety, the conviction, the awareness, the courage to go through it very quickly and transform unconsciousness into super consciousness. The byproduct of this, obviously, is a body that comes back online. The chakras move into the alignment of each other, which means I am matter, I matter. I create my reality, I demonstrate my reality, I connect my reality with others, I speak the essence of my reality, I see the reality I choose, I am. So when we complete this full circuit and we get that gut and that heart and that brain back into unity so that it's all asking for the same type of food and all asking for the same type of experiences to connect to the higher goals, and we are now effortlessly focusing, no more willpower. So willpower is required with this is disconnected from this and this is disconnected from that. You will have to use willpower to get to the gym. You will use willpower to eat healthy. When this is online, it's effortless, it's organic, and it's intuitive. So we don't need to go train to become an intuitive. We need to make the unconscious conscious within you. So right now I have locations in Kansas City, which is the Midwest of the United States. We have a location in Canada and we are creating a pop-up simulation or an integrated intensive week, hopefully in Spain in September. And that's kind of worth throwing it out there. And the reason why we're creating this is because I have clients all over this planet who are unvaccinated and can't get to the United States. Well, the loophole here is that I can get to you. And it's a very central point for our UK uh, people. And for right now, that is the quickest point that I could get to. If it, and that's probably our best case scenario because also the vibration of what's there for us. So we're gonna have a September integrated one week intensive program offering everything we have in house here, we will have there, including our portable apothecary that will assist everyone in their thought, word, deed, me, myself, and I, and unconscious inner child, super conscious self to help really solidify this one week experience. If they cannot be here in Kansas City to go through it in a more slow way. I don't think time really exists in this process. This can happen in one week and this can happen in three months. It really all depends on your level of dedication to this. And I really wanted to share this concept of what's happening, not so that you can come join my studio. I've created this, it works. It's working for every single person that I've taken people through. Lives are changing, genius is turning on pain is integrating away and it's no longer becoming such a push pull. And because I'm seeing this every time I, I take someone through this, that this shortcut, this biohack, this, this integration is, is here as a choice. Suffering has always felt like it wasn't a choice, but it is now. And to me, the greatest suffering is to believe you are something and manifest the opposite of it and be in that state of confusion and mystery and unknown and uncertainty where now what you've just manifested, you feel like you can't trust yourself. To me, that's hell on earth. So hopefully you got a little nugget of this. You've probably been doing some of this intuitively as bigger parts of you have been already kind of creating your own forms of biohacking. But for things that are in your blind spot, the real deep, dark stuff, you know, if you can't get me, but you understand the concepts, you might be able to create something for yourself. I would say recommend doing it. The reason why is because the more people that actively, proactively with bravery and self-love go through this process, then we put that into the collective and it becomes the hunter monkey effect where then everybody wakes up to the fact that they don't have to take another 2000 years to integrate their unconsciousness and that we can become sovereign in this lifetime. 
not wait for our grandkids, but in this lifetime, become unlimited beings, creators with superhuman powers and super ability to love without fear of loss because we've integrated all of it. The true definition of fear is anticipation of loss, okay? The true definition of unworthiness is I'm not allowed. The true definition of grief is homeless love. The true definition of anger is grief's bodyguard. So take that in. Shame means I did, I am, I'm bad. Guilt means I did something bad. And I'm going to tell you right now, the signature imprint of your unconscious is shame and guilt. That is what holds us away from uncovering what's in there. It's like a buffer that we repress, okay? So you'll see if you're not hearing like any truth in what I'm saying, you might be seeing this in other people right now. So I just wanted to give you a little understanding for your own journey and share a solution. So we're here in Kansas City. We are right now currently, because I have been doing so much work, like personally, I haven't tried to market this or, you know, sell this. I've just been literally doing this and taking people through it. We have, don't even have all of our content uh, of what this program is yet on our website, which is jessicaalstrom.com. So right now I'm sending things to people who are really connecting with this idea and they are coming to me directly. So yes, we are getting a this map on our website, where we are, where we're gonna be, how we're gonna do this. But if you're like, I don't wanna wait, right? You can reach me right now at um, quantumjess22 at gmail.com, or you can find me on Facebook, Jessica Alstrom, Instagram, Jessica Alstrom, um, or my website, which is jessicaalstrom.com, and you can, um, you know, request some information from our team over there. In the meantime, if you are or can get to Kansas City, reach out to me. If you can be anywhere near Spain in, let's say, August, September, like over there, energy, reach out to me because this is the front line and it's going to be amazing to be able to create a world for the people that are going to be arriving. And instead of, you know, feeling like we're constantly on this bridge, right? 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. You're driving. Someone's always got to pee in the background. Someone always needs something to eat, right? We're trying to get there. So we're here. We've got a lot of people on the planet that are holding space, calling you forward, saying it's so much better over here. Like nobody's mean over here. Like everybody loves everybody over here. You know, it's like money is like such a side thought over here because there's so much other abundance. You know, it's like you actually in a body that you freaking love and it works and it loves you back and it. You just to feel good in your own skin is a concept that I, I never thought I would experience on this planet. And, you know, me listening to it and it listening to me and it's that right there is something that I would pay literally a million U.S. dollars to experience. So that's the tip of the iceberg because you are body, even if you don't feel like you are your body, it's yours. OK, it's not something you'll have forever, but the more you resist it the more you are stuck in it and can't get out of it, right? You are not creating with it. It's almost like you're stuck on a trip with something you hate that doesn't work for you, right? You're here, you're now, you have to be choosing this somehow. And with that idea, just understand that because you are choosing this somewhere from some level of consciousness, that you also have a ton of choices right now because we are moving into an evolutionary state of being that says, yes, if you do. All right. Thank you for taking the time to hear me out. And again, if you are interested in this process or, you know, having a conversation with me about your personal story, reach out right now. Unfortunately, it's first come first serve. I'm creating a waiting list. It's not oversaturated where you can't get in. It's not like that right now because I am also creating practitioners that are, have lived in through this and are very well trained to take anyone through this all the time. So choose you, choose the biohack, go, you know, cut, cut to the end. You know, it's interesting. Like I've always been dyslexic and I felt very unworthy my whole life. And I had my fourth grade teacher said, Oh, you're just reading from the end. Start there and you won't feel so um, scared. 
And so when you feel through the end and say, I'm going to go through this now so I don't have to manifest this, it really is about creating a life that is, is like the end of pain. Okay. So thank you for share, taking the time to share your time with me and I will see you hopefully here or there. Talk to you soon.